So let's now talk about the dose. So there are six different size tablets available. The smallest is 1.25 milligrams. Then we have a 2.5 milligram tablet. There is a 3.75 milligram tablet, a 5 milligram tablet, a 7.5 milligram tablet, and then a 10 milligram tablet. 10 milligrams a day is the maximum dose of bisoprolol, and 1.25 milligrams a day is the minimum dose of bisoprolol. All of these tablets are extremely small and very easy to take. Bisoprolol is usually taken once daily, usually in the morning. The starting dose is usually 2.5 milligrams once a day. However, if you've got a very frail patient, so let's say it's an 80-year-old, a frail little old lady uh, who's got a very small body weight, in that case you might start off at a more cautious dose of 1.25 milligrams. If the starting dose isn't achieving the desired effect, then you increase the dose. If you've started at a dose of 2.5 milligrams a day, then you can usually increase the dose in size gaps of 2.5 milligrams. You can go up then to 5 milligrams a day. And if that's not working, you can go up to 7.5 milligrams a day. And if that's not working, you could go up to the maximum dose of 10 milligrams a day. If you started off with the more cautious dose of 1.25 milligrams and you want to increase the dose, then you would increase it by 1.25 milligrams rather than 2.5 milligrams. So you go from 1.25 to 2.5, from 2.5 to 3.75, from 3.75 to 5 milligrams. At 5 milligrams, if you're dealing with a very frail patient, you may want to consider not going any higher because you've probably blocked off a good deal of the sympathetic stimulation to their heart by now and it's not achieving the desired effects, you may want to consider using a different drug to now treat whatever problem you're trying to treat or adding in another drug alongside the bisoprolol. When you're putting them on this drug, of course, you need to be monitoring what it's doing to their heart rate and their blood pressure. To illustrate this, let's go through our five examples. So if you're using bisoprolol to treat high blood pressure, then of course, when you initiate the patient on it, you're going to be very interested in what it's done to their blood pressure, and you're going to increase the dose until you're happy that their blood pressure is under good control. But whilst you're doing that, you need to be monitoring what it's doing to their heart rate, because it's going to not only be bringing their blood pressure down, but it's going to be lowering their heart rate potentially, and you don't want their heart rate to go too low. The slower the heart rate is, the longer is the time interval between successive beats of the heart. This means that the gap between the systolic blood pressure and the diastolic blood pressure is going to get larger. We call this the pulse pressure, which is the difference between the systolic blood pressure and the diastolic blood pressure. So this is shown quite nicely on this picture here. So this is a graph and we're plotting on the vertical axis here blood pressure and then on the horizontal axis we're plotting time. So here this is representing a heartbeat and you can see the blood pressure goes up to systolic blood pressure here and then between this and the next heartbeat the pressure is dropping down to diastolic blood pressure here, then the heart beats again and it goes up to systolic blood pressure and then it drops down to diastolic blood pressure again. Now if you imagine making the heart go slower, so here we are, the heart beats and now it's going to start beating slower so there's going to be a much longer gap between uh, this beat and the next beat and you can see that the blood pressure is going to fall, it's going to have much more opportunity to fall so it's going to fall to a lower diastolic pressure so the difference between the systolic pressure and the diastolic pressure is going to increase, the pulse pressure is going to increase when the heart rate is going slower. Now it might be the case that both the systolic blood pressure and the diastolic blood pressure are within normal ranges and I've written here the normal ranges for both of them. So systolic blood pressure should usually be between 90 and 140 millimeters of mercury and diastolic blood pressure should usually be between 60 and 90 millimeters of mercury. So it might be the case that this systolic blood pressure up here is let's say 135 and this diastolic blood pressure down here is 65. So neither of them are hypotensive, so he's neither systolic hypotensive or diastolic hypotensive. However, if the gap between them, if the pulse pressure is too high, it can still lead to symptoms of low blood pressure. It can lead to weakness, floppiness, feeling lightheaded, potentially even passing out. 
So having a too high pulse pressure is not good. And this is the reason that you need to not just monitor what their systolic and diastolic blood pressure is doing, but also what their heart rate is doing and look at what their pulse pressure is doing. So overall, to treat high blood pressure with bisoprolol, you are aiming to get the systolic blood pressure lower than 140 and the diastolic blood pressure lower than 90, and you're going to increase the dose until you manage to achieve that, provided that it doesn't take the heart rate too low and the pulse pressure too high, because that can make them symptomatic of low blood pressure, which can potentially be dangerous if they uh, faint and uh, injure themselves from falling onto the ground. For sinus tachycardia and for the rate control of atrial fibrillation, you're going to increase the dose until you've got their heart rate under control, i.e. you're aiming for it to be less than 100. And you're going to raise the dose as much as possible, monitoring what their heart rate and their blood pressure is doing. And of course, you're going to be very interested in what their blood pressure is doing. You want to make sure that the drug isn't making them hypotensive. So as long as their blood pressure is okay, you can continue to raise the dose until their heart rate's under control. For the management of anginal symptoms, you're going to raise the dose until you've got the symptoms as well controlled as you think you're going to get them with this drug. And again, whilst you're doing that, you're going to be monitoring what their heart rate and their blood pressure is doing, making sure you're not sending them hypotensive or bradycardic. Finally, for the prevention of cardiac remodeling, ideally you want the individual to be on the highest dose of the drug that is possible that their heart rate and their blood pressure is going to uh, tolerate. So you'll gradually raise the dose, monitoring what it's doing to their heart rate and their blood pressure, and make sure that they're not going hypertensive or bradycardic. And as long as they're not, you can continue to raise the dose to protect them from cardiac remodeling. So finally, let's end by talking about the side effects of the drug. So the two main side effects of the drug are going to be hypotension and bradycardia. We've already talked about those. Those aren't really side effects. They're more effects of the dose being too high. So apart from those, the two side effects that I do see most often are nausea and nightmares. So some people take the drug and it makes them feel sick. So they might be feeling mildly sick every single day of their life because they're taking the drug every single day of their life. Usually this is a side effect that you only see when people are on larger doses, so doses greater than 5 milligrams. So if someone's on 10 milligrams of bisoprolol a day and then they're complaining of just sort of feeling sick on a daily basis, it might be the case that I think about could it be the bisoprolol that's causing this sensation. And really all you need to do is think about can the dose be lowered because usually, as I say, if you go to a dose 5 milligrams or lower, usually those doses don't cause this problem. Finally, the side effect of nightmares. This is a famous side effect of bisoprolol that it can give you very vivid, terrifying dreams. Other beta blockers can cause this as well, but bisoprolol is particularly bad. So if it's a big problem for the individual and it's very important for them to be on this beta blocker, what we can do is we can change it to a different cardioselective beta blocker that is less bad for causing nightmares. And in the UK, the one that we tend to change it to is a tenolol, which is another cardioselective beta blocker, and it has four diff sorry, three different tablet sizes, 25 milligrams, 50 milligrams, and 100 milligrams. And it usually is taken once daily as well, like bisoprolol. And the dosing is nicely analogous to bisoprolol. So 2.5 milligrams of bisoprolol can be converted to 25 milligrams of atenolol. 5 milligrams of bisoprolol can be converted to 50 milligrams of atenolol. 10 milligrams of bisoprolol to 100 milligrams of atenolol. In the UK, we don't like atenolol as much as bisoprolol. Bisoprolol is our first line beta blocker. We love bisoprolol. However, if it's causing this problem and this is a big issue for the individual, then we do change bisoprolol to atenolol.